Amen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in this feast of the falling asleep, the dormition of the Most Holy Mother of God. When we read the two readings from the Gospel, from two different places, but put together to teach us something, Mary has chosen the better part, which is to hearken to the words of God, to hearken to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, when the woman lifted up her hands in the congregation and said, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and that breasted nurse you, and our Lord Jesus Christ says, Yea, yes, and blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it, because no one so quickly heard the word of God and accepted it and committed herself to so great a task as did the most holy Peltokos and ever Virgin Mary. A strange announcement from the archangel, one that would baffle the human mind. And yet, because it was the word of God, Mary immediately accepted it and said, Let it be unto me according to your will, and gave herself over totally to the service of God and to the service of our salvation. Mary was the one chosen out of all ages and all generations out of all the prophets and all the holy ones throughout all of history to be the mother of God in the saving incarnation and to take so great a role in the unfolding of that mystery which was hidden from the ages but is now made manifest in the church. Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. For the Ark of the Old Covenant which God commanded Moses to build in the wilderness did it not contain the heavenly bread which came down to feed the multitude in the wilderness? And the staff, the rod that budded like a living tree, and the tables of the commandments. But in Mary's womb, the one who is truly the living bread came down to earth to nourish mankind unto salvation. And the rod that budded like a living tree, the rod out of the root of Jesse, that Nazara, the rod from the root, budded forth in the womb of the most pure virgin, even our Lord Jesus Christ. And the one who gave the commandments in the beginning has now come in the womb of the Virgin Mary to fulfill all the commandments and all the law on behalf of mankind and to tear up the manuscript that was against us, the manuscript of the law. Brothers and sisters, when we look at the icon of the Theotokos, of the Dormition, and we see how great was the mystery of the ever-Virgin One, of this Ark of the New Covenant, that no one could touch that Ark as, it, as in the Old Testament, the Ark could not be touched by anyone except the priest. Why do we see our Lord Jesus Christ taking the soul of the Virgin from her body? Does the scripture not tell us that the angels came and took away Lazarus and the same angels came and took away the rich man who both were carried away by the angels of God? That is, uh, St. Andrew of Crete tells us Heavenly messengers, the angels themselves, come to receive our souls. But as the demons tremble in terror and draw back away from the very name of the Theotokos, so even the angels of God tremble and cannot set their hands upon her or upon her soul. Because she's higher than the angels greater than the archangels, which one of them could dare to come and to touch that ark and to take the deposit from it? Only our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ could receive the soul of the ever-Virgin One. Brothers and sisters, we look upon the Theotokos 
though, and see that she's also one who cuts the trail for us, the trailblazer, because she was born in the flesh as one of us, born like us. She was fully human and only human like us. And yet that the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who spoke to Moses on the Mount of Sinai and appeared to Daniel as the Ancient of Days, could take on the form of a babe and dwell in her womb. Should we marvel then that our Lord Jesus Christ says that he will take up his abode in us and dwell in our hearts? And if she, being the mother of God, could die and then be raised from the dead and ascend into heaven, yet being human like us, does she not proclaim to us that if we have Christ dwelling within our hearts in this life, we likewise will be raised from the dead and taken into heaven. That all mankind will rise from the dead, some into light and some into darkness, but that the light of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the light and grace of the Holy Trinity, could dwell within those who truly believe and who seek Him, raised into light ineffable, into the radiance, of the glory of God, but the glory of God is the love of God. The love which God gives is glory beyond all glory. Brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in this feast of the Most Holy Mother of God because she is one of us and yet became higher than the angels. And we're told in Scripture that those who believe in God, that those the faithful or followers of Jesus Christ will judge angels. This is a great and holy and astonishing mystery that unfolds before us this day. Let us look with awe on the mystery itself without attempting to understand the mystery except the mystery as a revelation from God and see how a human person could participate in our salvation as an agent to facilitate our redemption. That God includes us in this great work of salvation. He includes mankind and makes us his own brothers and sisters, children of the Most High God. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not look down upon us. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world and he does not condemn us, but works together with us and includes us together in his work, in his ministry, in his priesthood. Think of the great wonder, brothers and sisters, that we sinful and fallen human beings are so loved by God that he includes us in his priesthood and in his ministry, and that he makes us co-workers together for salvation. Not for our salvation only, but for the salvation of mankind. Therefore, being co-workers together with God and sharing in the royal priesthood as well as the ordained priesthood, let us not betray this high calling, but seek with diligence and with all of our hearts and minds to assimilate the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to have the Trinity itself dwelling within our hearts that we might radiate the love of the compassion and mercy of God out to the rest of the world and that we might truly fulfill our apostleship which surely we all have when we profess the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and are born again in holy baptism. Brothers and sisters, we rejoice in the Theotokos who still looks over upon us and protects us and shelters us under the shelter of her love and her compassion. And we think, rejoice at our, Lord, our Lady of the Theotokos, the joy of Canada, who is a protectress of Canada and seeks together with us to illumine this nation of ours. We are all apostles. We are all priests. Let us, brothers and sisters, strive to live up to this high calling which our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ has not placed upon us as a burden, but shared with us 
as a blessing for me.